Well, good morning, Benjamin. I'm Valerie Milano from the Hollywood Times. Very nice Welcome. to meet you. Thanks. Nice to see you. Boy, you got a bunch going on back there. Or is that oh, yeah, a, a is... virtual? No, no, this is a real thing. This is uh, my my editing studio, really. It's just kind of all, all full of stuff right now. Okay. Well, that's nice. Well, mine's virtual. I don't have a sign back here, so. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> well, you're working. All right. Well, we'll just get started here. Uh, it was an amazing story. Um, a lot of heart. Um, it's, it's very simple and straightforward and it, it just has so much depth to it. So many layers. Uh, where did that idea come from? Wow. Uh, okay. So, um, um, whatever happened to Johnny Faye, um, Correct. I, I, uh, oh, so I lost my house, uh, in the Malibu, um, and the Woolsey fire and uh, everything that I owned in, in, uh, and I just really escaped with my wife and my son and my dog. And, uh, so we were living in destitute. It was really awful. And um, uh, I, I, before then, I had always wanted to direct a drama, a real drama, uh, because I've done comedy, I've done horror, I've done music videos, and I've done uh, you know smaller things. But anyway, so I had been looking for one. Anyway, one way or the other, so the, the fire takes everything we own, and uh, we're living in this awful place, and my 11-week-old son is uh, on the couch, and my um, father-in-law came over with his guitar. And he started to just play for my son, who had never seen a guitar um, before. And um, it, it just the wonder in his face. And this just story just sort of flooded into my head. And I immediately ran away and wrote it down. I wrote down the outline. Uh, and then uh, and then over the next week or so, developed the script. Um, and um, and there you go. That's how it, that's how it happened. And it was an amalgamation of my father and my father-in-law. Because my father-in-law is really Johnny Faith. Um, he's, he's not, he's not a country singer, but he's that man, you know, and, um, and, 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 and he's a, so he's half that and half my, my father. And I think, you know, sort of everybody has a, has a story like that somewhere, you know. And so uh, I was trying to do the math here. Um, so how long ago was that? The fire was in 2018. Okay. Uh, so it was shortly after the fire it was November, 2018, if I re recall. Uh, so um, uh, it was shortly after that that I had written the script. So it was about 20, late 2018, early 2019, when I finally had it all honed out. OK, well, um, it was an amazing cast. You know, I want to start with jo uh, with Frank Noon. Um, where did he come from? Well, uh, so originally Jim Belushi wanted to play the lead. Oh. And uh, right. And, and uh, he actually was a friend of my surgeon, my doctors. And uh, he just read the script that I was in San Diego. The phone rang, you know, having dinner with my wife. And suddenly there he is. He wants to wants to play the lead. I'm like, oh, oh my goodness. Right. So for two months, we negotiated back and forth. We talked about the character. It was so wonderful. He's such a wonderful guy. Uh, ultimately, we could not uh, we couldn't we couldn't meet financially uh, and because uh, you know we're a short you know small film a small budget and uh, ultimately we just couldn't do that but um and then I wound up going into the hospital and uh, my gallbladder had to come out and I thought we, they weren't letting me out and I thought it might have been something more serious and I I swore to myself if I would I was going to make this I was going to make this film right when I got out so and I did they let me out so um uh, and who picked me up was my father-in-law and I said you're hired and so we began working on on the script together and um uh, the rest is history. Yeah, well, we, I believe he's a drummer of considerable note, right? He, he, uh, well, uh, he is. He would like to make a statement that he is not that guy. He, he he's okay. been confused with another guy. He's been confused. He's a musician, uh, but he is not the. He's not that guy. That was a mistake. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, his character doesn't dominate. The story does, and, right. and I think that's what really makes it so special. Yeah, he 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 is a um, he's a wonderful actor. He's been an actor for all his life. He's been on Seinfeld and Roadhouse and Dark Man and all kinds of stuff, and he's been in a million commercials. But it's always the guy who opens the door and says, "This way, sir," or gets the, get gets shot in the head, you know, whatever. No one's ever really given him that opportunity. And I went and saw him at a play. He he he's my father-in-law. I saw him in this dinky little play. It was five seats. And uh, there was a guy who had a ton of charisma. He had a ton of charisma. And the poor guy had not been cast in anything that, you know, he deserved. It's a tough business. And he did been around forever. Just nobody gave him that, that shot. 
So, so we gave him the shot and boy, did he, he knocked it out of the park. I mean, wow. And he, he wanted it. He wanted it. He worked for it. He, he said to me the first time I, when, when, when he said, I said, you're hired. He said, well, I just want you to know he had read the script. I can't cry. And I said, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. And, and, and yet he did. I mean, he, he, he does and we do because he does. And, and it's the silent cry really that's, masterful thing you know absolutely did you uh, have bruce, to... go ahead go ahead i'm sorry oh i was gonna say bruce greenwood also wanted to play the lead uh and uh we went through some discussion there and, and um ultimately bruce got cast in the resident and had to go and and uh, we had some issues with the character that we were working out but uh, he is he is an amazing singer and performer and uh he has sent me these songs that he wrote himself that are just uh, outstanding and uh, I fell in love with him. And, 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 and when I edited the film, because I also edited, uh, I used his music in the bar and it became so ingrained in the film that uh, I begged him to let me use his music and he agreed. So that's his stuff. Beautiful. Yeah. I was going to ask about Bruce later on, but here we go. Um, did you have specific casting in mind for the other parts as you were writing this or was the cast selected to suit the parts? You know, chicken or egg. It, it, it was a, it was it was an amalgamation of both. I think, um, um, and it was such a great journey. I, I, I once I had Frank Noon, and I knew that he was going to be the main guy. And, and now I had to have the right people to play off of him. And the first person that I thought of was. Don't tell Debbie me. Pollock. Was it Wayne Knight? Uh, no, it was Debbie no. Pollock. Debbie oh, Pollock. okay. Okay. Yeah, we had actually inadvertently become friends on Facebook. Uh, just because we had the same last name, and I think that she wanted to know if we related, and we never were oh. right. So. But I knew her. And then before, what happened was I, I wrote the script. And then um, with all this casting I'm, we're talking about, we're missing the fact that a pandemic happened. And and so really the, the, it went into cold storage while that was going on. And while that was happening, I put the film into festivals, just the script. And it won over 30, 30 awards. So, so it's like, oh, my God, we have to make this. Right. So so then I decided to do a trailer, a you know, concept trailer, and I asked Debbie if she would play the opposite, you know, the the, the opening character there. She did, and then I, I said, oh my gosh, she was so wonderful, I had to cast her. And when I cast her in the film, I mean, she is like Meryl Streep on steroids. She is so wonderful, and it raised the level of my film to such a high degree, I, you know, I was afraid we were never going to be able to match it. Uh, Wayne Knight was a, uh, was a, was a last minute uh, uh, casting and uh, a very exciting and and it was a lot of fun. He he is such a multi dimensional actor. You know he he took the part we discussed it somewhat and he worked on it a little bit uh, and then he brought in just these levels of you know a hurt person, an angry man, uh, a, a man who was also in love with 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 the, you know his the, 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 his friend's wife, but not in a romantic way, but you know as a, as a sister. And 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 then he and then he becomes the comical tone and and it switches gears so 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 wonderfully you know so he was great he was a wonderful addition to the film. Getting back to Pollock, I was wondering the same thing if he if she was related. So no, yeah. no, she, she's <laughs> not, and she was just such a, a stroke of luck because she's yeah. so right for that part. Yeah, she did so, great. She owned it, you know. She really owned it. Beautiful, really. You're absolutely right. Um, a question about the location. I think I've driven down that long stretch of road. Where was it filmed primarily? In in, uh, in the, most of the film was shot in Malibu, California, and, and uh, it looks like it's all over the world, but it's or, you know all over the country, but it's it's uh, it's all mostly in Malibu. The bar was not in Malibu, and the desert, of course, is Palmdale. So um, um, so yeah, and that was a, quite an experience there too. That was actually a test that we went and shot the desert and the uh, the opening trailer scene just to see if I could do it. And, and, um, cause it, you know, we, we funded it ourselves. So, uh, it wasn't cheap. So, um, uh, uh, the, so we, we spent, I spent like $30,000 doing the first two scenes and, uh, I came home and I edited them together and my wife sat down next to me and we're like, okay, if it sucks, we're just going to stop and cut our losses. And we looked at it and we we're both like, Oh no, we have to make the rest of the movie now. So, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, that's an aside. I'm sorry. Yeah. What part, what part of time of the year was that? Because was, how was the weather? It was towards the uh, towards the I think it was, it was tw towards December. 
So, oh, yeah, so we didn't have the heat. To have we were to chasing, no, we didn't have the heat, and we yeah. were chasing rain clouds. There were rain clouds all over. We kept getting rained on while we were out there. Yo. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. So we talk about the music for a second. Um, another inspired choice. How did that come together? Well, besides was, your father-in-law that you talked about at the beginning, right? The song he sang to my son is the song I used yes. in the film, right? So, so, and in the beginning of the film, you hear it, and at the end of the film, I hope you realize that he's that he was in the recording studio doing that right uh, for for the one he sent his agent but when it went one way or the other uh so the music was earthy and real and so i realized oh all the music has to be earthy and real and it has to have some connection to the character and to the subtext and to the narrative rhythm uh mm -hmm. so of course naturally i heard bruce greenwood's song that's that, that song he sings in singapore you know you found me drinking and 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 Wow, I mean, you know, just the right milieu, you know, the right tone, uh, and then uh, and then score. Score was really important, and uh, I just stumbled across, a, a, you know, a, a, some really talented people that work for uh, Shutterstock, and uh, they put together a thing for me that was just like through the roof. I mean, it was just quite quite something. So um, I know I knew I had the music. Once I had the music, I, I, it was just now a matter of putting the pieces together and these wonderful performances, you know. And it was pretty easy. Love it. Well, it didn't seem that easy. And it was just fascinating. I just glued to it. And um, I actually had my husband watch it. I know that might not be part of these rules, but <laughs> hey, he lives with me. Well, that's great. Okay. But my, my he's wife a musician. Is the executive producer, so. right? Oh, really? Part no of, kidding. Yeah. So my wife was the executive producer. So she, she was over my shoulder the entire time. You know. Excellent. <laughs> I had a lot to it, prove. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So anything else you want to tell us before we start signing off here? Uh, yeah. We've been working just, uh, on it. Can you talk about that? Yeah, we, we'd love to make this into a, a into a feature. And, and we've been sort of approached about that and, you know, sort of seeing about expanding the characters. But I have a slate of other things that I'd like to do, too. And, and it's just really, you know, it's time. I think, uh, I, you know, I, I made this film and I'm like, this is what I can do. I'd, I'd like to do more of it and and see where that takes me, you know. Um, uh, filmmaking is a wonderful thing. I think it's becoming somewhat of a lost art because we're sort of losing the traditional way we used to watch films in the theater and whatnot. And, and now, we, you know, I, I, and me included, we all watch entertainment on our phone all the time. Uh, and uh, filmmaking like this, classic filmmaking, where you're going for a narrative and trying to go to the subtext and touch people's heart and soul without letting them know, is becoming somewhat of a lost art. And we, I hope that it, it continues, you know. I hope yes. that we don't. You know, I, and I like to do that for the rest of my life. <laughs> Just keep the keep that alive for as long as I can. So you're here locally in Los Angeles. I live in Malibu. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just never really realized how many film festivals there are these days. There's like three going on right now at the same time. Right. And it's like, oh my god! As a journalist, as a reporter, as a writer, interviewer, YouTube channel post, you know, it's like. Whoa, help, you know. Right. right do do right. you remember this festivals. many film festivals? No. And uh, there were, I mean, now there's just, I mean, it's a business, right? It's a business for a lot of them. Uh, so, and, and only a few of them are, are, are academy qualifying. So I decided to stick to just those. So, we, so our LA Shorts is one of those. Yay. So, yes. if, we, if we went in a thing, we'd be in line for an academy award. And then I'll just like, you know, blow my head off or, you know, you know in, in excitement, <laughs> you know. Who knows? Great, Benjamin. Well, how can everybody find you and your production company and stuff like that, our readers and watchers? Uh, my name is Benjamin Pollock. You can Google me. Um, uh, I, uh, I own a company called Benvention Films. Well, uh, Sting's agent came into my office one day and said, hey, that's a Benvention, because using my name. And I'm like, hey, I'll take that name. Uh, so um, uh, that's the name of my company and uh, the name of the film, uh, Whatever Happened to Johnny Faith. Should be out as soon as the festivals are, or so festival run is done. Which, uh, hopefully, to get it on on uh, Netflix or Vimeo or something uh, where everybody can enjoy it, you know, because it's really a fun film. It's twenty four and a half minutes long, so it's like a a good short film. Uh, you know, it's got the, and a lot happens in that short period of time. So for sure, for sure, yeah. yeah. Well, lovely. Well, we're getting the word out for sure, and and I appreciate all the time you've taken with the Hollywood Times dot today. And thank you, thank you for um, having me. Yes, for sure. And hope to meet you in person one day. That would be awesome. Great. Absolutely. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day with all your projects. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Bye-bye.